Hey Ultimate Guitar, my name is Ryan from a band called The World Over, and today I'll be showing you the first song off of our second EP called Traitor. Uh, this is one of my most favorite songs to play live. It has lots of cool, fun riffs and some fancy, expensive chords in it. I'll do a run through and then I'll break it down section by section. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the verse riff is basically a minor 7 arpeggio to the relative major 7 arpeggio. If you're having trouble finding where to come in, uh, you can just cheat like we do and use a click. Um, so anyways, we have this minor 7 arpeggio, then it goes to the major 7. 
while the fingering of this riff isn't too bad, the thing that makes it tricky is the rhythm. So the first time you land on the seven, it's an eighth note, and then the second time, it's a dotted eighth note. Uh, it's a little bit slower the second time around, so make sure you're conscious of that when you're playing, and just look out for the downbeats. It's just one, three. The ending is kind of tricky too because it's on all of the um, it's on all the e's and ahs. The off 16th notes. So what I'd recommend when you're playing it faster is uh, maybe try to hit them all on the upstrokes to help you uh, stay in time a little bit better. And uh, also I like to hammer on the first note because it just makes it a little bit easier. So just slap your pinky on there. So in time and in full that riff is. I, I usually like to have delay on for it too. One, two, three, four. Yep. So the pre chorus riff, which is uh, the main riff throughout the entire song, builds on that verse riff and adds distortion. Uh, going into it, live, I like to do like a chugging build-up kind of thing, like a... It's all 16th notes and yeah, it's just like a build-up. So that riff has a similar rhythm, but it stays consistent to that half clave poppy rhythm that you hear so much, the dun 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 with a couple extra 16th notes. So slowly, that's... Bend is optional, I, I don't know, I just do it when I feel like it. Um, again, that starts with a hammer on. And then pick the rest of the notes. And then uh, same with the fill at the end of it. And in time, that gives us two, three, four. Sometimes I like to do different fills on that just to mess around. The song's very open. You have a lot of gives you a lot of freedom to kind of you know experiment and do whatever you want. But sometimes I uh, I like to come up like an octave higher on the fill. Uh, it's not on the recording, but it's fun. So try it. So then that chord at the end of the pre-chorus is just a um, uh, third fret with a nine. And then that brings us right to the chorus. The chorus has a few noty chords in it that aren't just power chords, they have extensions and whatnot. So for the song, tonal wise, I like to use less distortion. Uh, I'll usually have the gain at like maybe 50 to 60%. And then it allows the notes to be more clear while still being kind of punchy. So the first chord is fifth fret with a nine and a five on top. Second chord, so it's eight. You kind of have this major seven with, uh, with that in the bass. And then the third chord, it just goes to the open chord, and it's a minor seven with seven on top. And it's important to get that because that comes down to the major six, which makes it a little bit more spicy, gives it some more color. And then it comes back up here to the relative major which is a major 7 chord. The thing about the chords is all the chords are pushed, except on the repeats, and when it goes back to the main riff. So, in time, we'll have... One, two,
the second verse is very similar to the main riff. Um, for this riff, I like to bring down the volume knob so it sounds a little bit tighter. And again, you have this hybrid of hammer-ons and picking every note. So it's like pick, pull off, pick, pick, pull off, pick. So slowly that'll sound like this. So just like in the main riff, uh, I like to throw in fills sometimes. Um, usually stuff that's kind of in the same vein of what the riff is doing originally. Um, so something kind of like... Or, you know, just little things like that. Again, uh, make it your own. The song gives you a lot of freedom to experiment with different riffs and licks and, you know, things like that. It's, it's pretty open, I find. So, at the end of this riff, I like to do a, sim a similar thing to the ending of the first verse, where you, uh, you do that sort of chug build-up thing, but this time the volume knob is down. So, the way that I do it live is the volume will still be down, and I'll start the build-up, and as I'm doing the build-up, I'll bring up the volume, and it gives you a, an even raunchier kind of swell, or a more dynamic swell, rather. So, that sounds something like this. <laughs> So in time, that'll sound something like this. Two, three, four. This leaves us with the bridge riff. It's one of the easier parts of the song. It's just right up here, the seventh, which is on the tenth fret, uh, going between that and the open string. That's the first part of it, and then there's the two different endings. First one is a sixth chord, it comes up. The second one is this raunchy chord, which I'll get to in a minute. So in full, we have. Get the idea. So back to this raunchy chord right here. It's basically a, a really difficult way of playing an E flat major seven sharp eleven chord. Um, so you have your root, um, the tritone, which is the sharp four, or no sharp eleven. I guess in this case sharp four. I don't know. So you have the root, the sharp four, the five, another sharp four, sharp eleven, whatever you want to call it, and the major seven. At the end of that riff live, uh, I know it's not in the recording, but I usually like to do one of these, one of these raunchy sounding harmonics, and um, the way you get that is, I'll bring it over to this camera over here, you want to strum, well make sure you're not muting any strings, and you want to strum above the nut, or past the nut, and then you just let her rip, and then like throw a little tremolo on to give it a little bit more flash. <laughs> And that about does it for this song. Um, shouldn't be too hard to figure out the form. It's a typical song structure. Once again, I'm Ryan from The World Over. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks to Ultimate Guitar for giving me the opportunity to show this song to anybody who wants to learn it. Be sure to catch us playing this song live on tour with OTEP. Dates will be in the description. And also keep an eye out for our new single. Thanks again.